Last word with Irish Life Pensions, the choice of seven of the ten biggest Irish companies. The second Global Economic Forum, Irish Global Economic Forum, takes place in Dublin Castle this weekend after the family event two years ago. One of those who is speaking at it is John Hartnett, president and founder of the Irish Technology Leadership Group. He's been at Dublin City University today meeting with various companies, Irish startups. Good evening to you, John. Hi, Matt. How are you doing? Very good. Uh, well, I'm not doing great, so apologies for the voice. Glad to hear you're well. Tell us, please, what is the Irish Technology Leadership Group? So the Irish Technology Leadership Group is a group of Irish, Irish-American executives um, that are based, you know, primarily across the U.S. and obviously in the technology sector means that we have a, a high density of of executives in uh, Silicon Valley. So, you know, senior vice presidents of Cisco, Intel, Apple, you know, companies that would be household names to us in Ireland. How many of them are Irish-born? Um, it's actually quite a mix. Um, I would say, you know, we, we currently have probably about, I would say, 30, 35 percent are Irish born and I would say probably a greater percentage are Irish American. And then how many of them are interested in forming uh, networks or forming associations or having investments in companies back in Ireland? Yeah, I mean, this, this is kind of the, I guess, the, the market gap that we, we saw, you know, four years ago when, you know, much of the Irish, uh, you know, brand across the US was pretty much our old brand of, you know, uh, I guess shamrocks and shillelaghs, yet it didn't have the new brand of you know innovation and you know technology leaders that have been coming out and being successful in the US you know through the 80s, 90s, and and and, and the current current century. So um, this was uh, a pretty amazing event that happened over the last few years, where we literally started this with executives from the companies I mentioned, with about 15 executives, and today we've we've more than 3,000. Uh, executives worldwide and um, you know I would say obviously you know Irish executives who have been successful uh, you know in the US uh, it's a little bit of giving back uh, in terms of uh, helping you know young startups and, and helping in the current environment. What sort of help? Uh, it's uh, three main areas really I mean the three most important things to any company are really about uh, customers and access to those customers, um, access to capital and you know access to, to talent or mentorship uh, in terms of what they're what those companies are trying to achieve so what we've done over the last number of years in many Irish startups when they come out to you know Silicon Valley you know it's a you know a whole new country a whole new place and minimal kind of contact so we've been able to kind of open doors for many of these these companies and help them get right in uh, at the most senior levels and so because there companies. must be enormous competition there must be companies coming from all over Europe coming from Britain continental Europe even companies from other parts of the United States must be battering doors down the doors of companies in Silicon Valley looking to do business with them. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, Silicon Valley is the number one destination, you know, from an innovation perspective, and it's the epicenter of, uh, you know, of technology. And um, it's also the number one destination in terms of venture, venture capital. And 40% uh, of venture capital is actually invested in Silicon Valley across, that's right across the entire 50 states of the U.S. So it's obviously, a, you know, a key destination point for some of those, for some of those reasons. Um, I've, I've been in Silicon Valley for the last 14 years and I've, I've observed countries that have completely, as I say in the US, knocked it out of the park in terms of what they've done. And countries like Israel, for example, over the last 13, 14 years have really done an incredible job. In what way? They've leveraged, their, they've leveraged and organized their diaspora. Uh, so they are very well connected into um, you know, people within the industry, people within uh, investment. And then at the same time, they create networks that are connecting right in to Tel Aviv, right into Silicon Valley, and you know, if you look at the results of what you know Israel has done, you know Israel has 130 companies on Nasdaq, quoted companies, um, more than the entire continent of Europe. And if you compare Israel to Ireland, you know we've very much similar ingredients in terms of you know we've got the you know we've got the um, critical mass of Silicon Valley-based companies in Ireland, likewise you know in Israel, and likewise we have an entrepreneurial culture here. However, what we haven't been as good at is really leveraging the U.S. market, leveraging that diaspora, and put that diaspora to work to be able to help those companies scale in a very significant way in the in the hundreds and millions of dollars and the billions of dollars rather than um, you know early exits, which you know we've probably done too many of those over the last number of years. What do you mean by early exits? Um, I think that uh, you know a big part of you know a company's success uh, is you know. You know, do they go public? Did it sell to and acquire 
and uh, you know I've looked at many companies uh, that have come over from Ireland and have seen some successful exits of the 50 and 60 and 80 million dollar range yet you know those companies you know could go on to being hundreds of millions if not billions of dollars but why don't they is it sort of trying to take the money too quickly cutting and run rather than having the ambition to get much bigger I, I think it's a combination of ambition um, I think clearly um, we've been coming over here over the last four years and I think, you know, from an ambition perspective, I've seen that significantly, uh, you know, increase uh, with the entrepreneurs in Ireland. So I think that's a positive right now. But at the same time, you know, we need to be walking out of Trinity or walking out of UCC with the ambition to create the next Google, not necessarily creating a niche company that we're going to sell for 10 million. Well, do but, we have enough ambition to do that? Or do we also have the products and services that people are going to want? Yeah, I mean, you know, this week... Um, We've, we've met with 50 companies in the last 48 hours, and um, we've also engaged with uh, probably about 300 companies over the last uh, you know, two years since we've uh, been engaged with companies. And yes is the answer. You know, I mean, like some of the companies that um, you know, we've engaged with, you know, Skill Pages, for example, won our award last year. You know, I think that's one of the, the, the hot potential companies that are coming out of Ireland in the social media space. Um, likewise, uh, MCore, which is a 3D printing company, out of County Loud, the young young company we invested, you know, uh, in them uh, at this stage. And uh, again, I see them as being, you know, a big a big potential, uh, you know, going forward over the next few years. John Hartnett, president and founder of the Irish Technology Leadership Group. Thank you very much for taking the time to join us on the program.